Hello Internet, how you doing? My name's Bob. Uh, I'm a Jeep owner and enthusiast. Uh, I am not a real mechanic. Um, I am an amateur at best, and I'm learning as I go. Um, one of the things I've learned from uh, my Jeep in the last few months of ownership, I've only had it for a few months now, uh, is that every time I buy something or, or you know, try out a new mod, put on an exhaust, put on a bumper, skid plates, whatever, um, the instructions are always horrific from every manufacturer um, and there's very very little information out there of how to how to do things correctly so there's a lot of kind of trial and error um, and there's a lot of research that I do on the on the internet mostly on YouTube uh, looking at other people doing the same project I'm doing and and seeing what they do and I found that the thing that I learned the most from is from watching other people do videos so I thought maybe I would do some videos especially for the mods that I'm doing that I can't find a lot of information on so you can see me struggle through a lot of this stuff, you can see me make my, my mistakes, and perhaps you can you know, figure out how to do your own project uh, with a little help from, from me you know, busting my knuckles on, on what I'm trying. So this is gonna be the first uh, video I'm making with my Jeep. It is gonna be the front bumper project um, where I'm gonna be installing an XRC Gen 2 uh, front bumper from Smitty Built. Uh, along with a Smittybilt X20, 10,000 pound uh, synthetic rope winch, um, some fog lights from Casey Highlights, uh, a light bar that I ended up getting at the last minute from Raxium, and um, just some other fun stuff. I, I made a semi-custom license plate mount, did some other stuff like that. So you'll see me struggle through that. I break a lot of stuff. I cuss a lot, so if you don't like cussing, you probably won't like this. Um, but I think it's more or less fun. I made it really long because one of the things I don't love about other uh, install videos is, you know, somebody says, okay, we just, we put the bumper here, we put the bolts on, and then you just see it cut away and they, they show the finished Jeep, and that doesn't really help much. So if this is a little long, it's gonna be probably three or four 20 minute videos. You know, it's gonna be long as hell. Uh, feel free to fast forward, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, I just wanna give you plenty of, plenty of detail and plenty of information so that you can uh, make the right decisions on your Jeep uh, by watching me make some of the wrong ones. Um, so anyway, that's my intro. Uh, I hope you enjoy. If you do like this, I think I'm going to try to keep this going as I do more mods. Uh, I'm going to try to do as much work as possible myself on my Jeep and take it to the mechanic as little as I can because I really, really enjoy that part of it. And uh, thanks for joining me. Enjoy. One of the odd things about this build, you'll notice I'm in my apartment. Um, that's because uh, I don't have a garage to use and a significant amount of this build is going to be stuff that I can do indoors where it's air-conditioned uh, so it actually I kind of prefer it um, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing and we'll get to it so here's the parts we have so far we're still waiting for uh, some new LED fog lights um, and a new Haas Fairlead um, for now if I get that far I'll end up putting on this stock one but eh, maybe I won't. I think I'm probably gonna wait because I, I can probably get back there before the bumper gets mounted. I just want to get it on there before before I mount the bumper onto the Jeep because I think once it gets mounted trying to get behind there is gonna be kind of a pain in the ass. But this is my uh, Smitty Belt XRC Gen 2 front bumper. The thing is a freaking beast. It weighs I think it's 120 pounds um, by itself. And then we're going to add all this stuff to it. So it's going to end up being about 200 pounds or just under 200 pounds. Um, the winch is uh, the new X20 uh, 10,000 pounds midi built uh, winch with synthetic rope. And um, most of the Jeep people already know why you would go with synthetic rope. But just a quick demonstration. This is 100 feet of synthetic rope and I'm lifting it with one hand. You try to do that with cable. Um, it's really light. And it's, and it's arguably significantly stronger than, than cable. I know people have favorites and they will say that they go with cable all the time, but I love that it's lighter, especially considering this is a 200 pound build. Um, so these are all the pieces to it. You have the winch uh, and you have a wiring harness here um, that can be mounted anywhere, but I'm just gonna mount it to the center of the winch like everybody does. Um, and then we have the wireless remote which is right here and that's just a little wireless remote so you can go in and out um, there is a cable that you can plug into the back here that plugs um, into your uh, winch so that you can do it without uh, you know if your batteries die or something like that but um, 
I like the idea that it's wireless. I can do it from inside the cap of the Jeep. And then there's also uh, my Factor 55 uh, ProLink I'm going to use instead of the hook. Um, so the winch rope comes with this uh, cast iron hook, or cast, cast steel hook. Um, it's fine, but I don't love that it's got this little flimsy uh, spring clip that could go loose, you know, so you're passing around a tree and you give it some slack, you know, the, the rope could conceivably get caught up in that winch hook and that's not good. So I like the Factor 55 thing. They're not terribly expensive. They're strong as hell. Um, and so this is what I'm going to use. So later we'll get, we're going to cut that hook off because you'll notice this hook is completely forged, the whole thing, and they spliced over it. And I think it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to cut this hook off and it's going to be to, to re-splice this winch rope, uh, especially considering it needs to hold up to 10,000 pounds. I don't want to be responsible for that splice. So we're going to cut that off and uh, yeah. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I need a front bumper, I mean I need a front license plate because I live in New Jersey. Um, a lot of people will put a little roller thing over the Haas Fairlead or a little flip up license plate thing for the oh, no, that's Haas Fairlead. I don't love that. I want to be able to get to my winch and I don't want to have my license plate potentially fall off. So I'm going to be mounting this guy uh, right about here. And I do have to do some cutting and do some stuff to get that to fit right, but it's going to end up sitting kind of like that and you know, you'll see what I'm done. Uh, so anyway, let's get to the build. Uh, we're going to start assembling stuff little by little here. Uh, I think I'm going to start off with working on this thing. I got to cut uh, about an inch or so off of each end of this uh, license plate mount. I, I forget the name of this license plate mount. I found it on Amazon. It's a uh, it's supposed to be a license. It's supposed to be a, a way to mount lights to your license plate, but I'm using this to mount to the light bar attachment of my uh, my bull bar there in the front. Um, that way I can have it kind of recessed. I think it's going to look pretty cool and I can easily access my winch without having to flip up a license or worry about something that's going to fall off. Um, so we're going to get to that. Okay, so this is what we have here. I'm going to be doing this in my apartment um, because, uh, well, you can't work outside of your apartment here and they have these rules and homeowners association, whatever. So I'm going to do this in my apartment. Probably not the best idea. Um, the only reason I'm really going to be doing this in my apartment, and, and I certainly wouldn't recommend anybody else doing it, but I live up on the 12th floor, I have fantastic ventilation, um, and um, I've cut stuff with my Dremel plenty of times, and I know just how many sparks I can throw before I need to stop. Um, but that's something to talk about. Um, so essentially I'm going to cut this with a Dremel, I know most, a lot of people do this with a cutoff wheel. Um, I just find that the Dremel, you can do, it takes a little longer, but you can do it more carefully. Uh, and your chance of injuring the rope or burning something is a lot lower. Um, anytime you cut metal, you're going to generate a shitload of heat um, that's going to radiate all around the hook. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in stages. I'm just going to do it long enough uh, till I can no, no longer touch this with my finger and then I'm going to stop because I don't want this synthetic rope to melt. Um, I'm also protecting it with, uh, I made like a little spark arrestor uh, just out of a box from Smitty Belt from, that the winch came in. Uh, got a towel, damp but not wet, wet, wet and again a rag that's not terribly wet that's wrapped around the rope to try to kind of insulate it too. Um, so if this thing starts to steam a little bit I know that I'm going too far. But uh, again I'm going to do this until it's hot to the touch with my bare hands and then I'm going to stop and give it a break and let it cool back down again and then start over. So uh, let's get going. Alright so we're going to start cutting this. I took that spring clamp off just because it was in the way. I'm just going to hold it like this. Um, so there's my drywall with the cutoff wheel. This is going to take a while. Um, so I'll probably fast forward this, but anyway, here we go. Okay, so it's starting to get a little warm. It's still not too hot to touch. And we're just about, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, but you probably can't see that. I don't know how to, how to make that or clear but you can see we're about halfway through maybe a little more so I'm gonna give this a little break so that I'm not stressing out my rope any too much and I'm gonna go ahead and cut one side of the license plate bracket and then I can come back to this and hopefully be able to finish this off all right so next thing we're cutting is this license plate bracket um, I didn't show you on there but I'll, I'll show you when I mount it uh, this bracket is too wide uh, by about two inches so I'm gonna cut an inch off of here cut an inch off of here Still going to give me plenty of room to mount. You can see the little divots there. 
the screws and it's going to be supported on either side by the bracket so it's not going to be able to slip out of the ends and again it's just holding my license plate so this is overkill just as it is this thing's got to weigh you know three or four pounds and it's just thick solid metal so I think this is already complete overkill so I'm going to go ahead and cut off these two little tabs and then we will start to get that mounted. Alright, so there's the first side, uh, basically just cutting it along the tape line, nothing special there. I'm going to grind it off and make it smooth and bevel the edges later, uh, but now we can go back to the hook. That's totally cooled off now, and hopefully finish that off. I don't know if I'm going to have to cut both sides of this or if I'll be able to bend it. It's so freaking thick, I don't think I'm going to be able to bend it, so I may have to cut off both sides, which seriously sucks. Um, but here we go. All right, so we have a nice clean cut. Um, let's see if I can get that close enough. You can see right through it. So it's a clean cut. Um, this puppy is not gonna bend. I might throw it in a vise and whack it with a hammer a few times and see what, uh, what I can get out of that. But I'll leave that off the video because I think everybody knows how to use a hammer. Okay. So here's my complaint with this mini belt. I, I know that they wanted this to be solid, but uh, I just wish they would have made a way to splice this in or something else rather than this, this hook because I just beat the living shit out of this with a hammer and it didn't even move. Um, so I guess that's a compliment to the strength of the hook, but since I'm going to throw it in the trash, um, it's just kind of a bummer. So we're going to wrap this thing up again and we're going to cut it here. There's a narrow channel right here that I'm going to try to cut along. So that hopefully it's not as much of a pain in the ass as it was on the other side. And let's get back to it. So we're almost through. I think now if I hit it with the hammer, I can probably break it. So I'm gonna try that. All right. So I finally broke it off. I ended up having to cut it again. This thing was nearly indestructible. So that's junk, bye-bye. But since we wrapped it and since we took breaks, you can see it's still totally clean. There's not a scratch. And the rope on this side is very happy and cool and totally intact. So now we can hook that up to our uh, Factor 55 Pro Link and it's going to be nice and strong. So on to the next half of this piece and then we can actually start turning some screws and bolts. Alright, so that's cut. Now we're going to take the tape off and grind it down, make it smooth. Okay, nice and smooth, looks good, good enough for us. Alright, All right, so here we're back at the bumper. Um, so I can now show you a little bit about why I had to cut the bracket. So I have the bracket now, it's all sanded and painted and looks nice. Um, so you can see it's a really tight fit in there even with the cut. Um, so before I cut it, it wouldn't even fit. Now what I've discovered now that I cut it is that it's too it's too long to fit in the depth of just this bulb the distance between the bull bar and the bumper that's my own fault i liked a little bull bar but now i'm paying for it so um and then another thing you can't quite see there is the holes here are too uh deep there's too much metal on this end uh, of this bracket um, but just by about a ah, just a little bit like an eighth of an inch um so my solution is is I'm gonna let it 
rock down a little bit onto that. So instead of being flush like it is right here, I'm gonna rock it forward a little bit and I'm just gonna have it overlap the lip just a hair. Um, so it'll be basically like that. Um, now the one problem is, is I might get some vibration between the, the uh, license plate mount and the bumper. Um, I'm gonna monkey down as hard as I can on these bolts to make it really, really solid. But if that happens, I'll just run a bead of JB Weld or something in there uh, and just call it a day. Because again, this is, this is a license plate mount. I don't want to go too crazy. I still have a winch to put on, fog lights to put in, a fairly to put in, shitload of stuff to do before I even put this on my Jeep, which is really the big project. Um, so we're going to go ahead and bolt this down. Um, what I came up with to solve that problem is just a stack of, uh, I have a quarter, in, uh, quarter inch stainless uh, uh, lag bolt with uh, just a shitload of spacers. So I have a nylon three quarter inch spacer, uh, quarter inch flat washer, that's a little bit, that's, that's the width of the nylon spacer, a normal quarter inch washer, and then on the other side, two of the other, two of the washers just give me a little bit more space, and then uh, a standard uh, quarter inch washer for either side of the bumper mount. Um, so we'll put all that together and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay. It's easier to crawl around the bumper to lift it than to lift this thing up. This thing's so freaking heavy. It's almost like, no, no, no. It's almost like treating like a car all by itself. What's happening? Oh, this is really cool. Oh, you bastard. Okay. Um, I'll show you once I get done with this, but what ended up happening is the way that this is sitting in this bracket, you can't see it until I move the camera. Um, it actually perfectly spaced out this license plate frame about a quarter inch off of the bumper, just the way. It, just the way it's set up. So I'm gonna wrench down on these and get them nice and tight. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. But this is a stroke of luck, I think. Yeah, it's just barely not gonna vibrate. That's awesome. This thing is really fucking heavy. And something just popped. What just popped? The fucking bolt just popped. That sucks. <clears throat> Popped my stainless bolts. So we gotta start over. Alright. Back to Home Depot. Get a couple more of these bolts. They're gonna bend, and that's just what it is, because this isn't a perfect fit, but whatever. All right, so I just snapped a bolt, uh, and here it is. And I snapped it trying to mount just my license plate mount, like not even torquing down on it super hard. Um, but it's, uh, it was just a, it, it turned out to be kind of a fun lesson in uh, chemistry, and let me show you. So here we have two bolts. These are both quarter inch bolts. Uh, lag bolts, they have little, little squares on the end to fit into these slots. Um, one of them is stainless and the other one is zinc, uh, zinc coated steel. Now the stainless one is significantly more expensive. I think this is about 71 cents and this was 17 cents. Um, and is much, much stronger, but the word stronger is a weird word to use when you're talking about steel. Um, and uh, so I kind of knee-jerk reaction tend to go with stainless for anything I'm going to do on the exterior of my Jeep because it is in New Jersey and there is winter here and there is snow and they put just offensive amounts of salt on the road whenever it snows. Um, so I like to try to make things as rust proof as possible. But um, that said, in this weird application where I'm trying to turn a corner, where I'm kind of going diagonally this way, 
um, what's happening is the bolt wants to bend here and it wants to bend at the uh, on the other side of the bracket so it's almost like we're trying to make it turn you know kind of turn into an s a very mild s but like a little s so what happened so i'm wrenching down on this and it's trying to bend stainless steel does not like to bend stainless steel has got lots of chromium in it and chromium is a very rigid uh, uh, chemical or, or very rigid, uh, very rigid mineral i should say um, and so it doesn't like to bend um, steel on the other hand regular old just you know plain steel that's been zinc coated is has got a ton of iron in it, and it's got a much, much higher concentration of iron than stainless does. Stainless has is, is got a lot of chromium mixed in with the iron, which makes it, that's one of the reasons it's not magnetic, is because all the iron, all the little iron elements are kind of separated by the chromium. Uh, it also makes it not rust. But with regular steel that's been zinc coated, this is basically just hardened iron um, that's just been dipped in some zinc. So this is a very, very soft steel. So it's not as strong, technically, as stainless is but it's much much more malleable it'll bend a lot easier so this is what we want for something funky like what we're doing over here um, uh, and then you know the galvanized uh, hot galvanized steel kind of sits somewhere in the middle so you have stainless is very strong very rigid galvanized is pretty strong pretty rigid and then you have zinc coated which is actually very squishy and bendy comparatively um, but it also uh, is more likely to rust. So what I'll probably end up doing is just spray painting some truck bed liner on this whole setup after I'm all done. But anyway, that's uh, that's what we learned today. So now we're going to stack all these washers again and see if we can do this all over again and get this guy mounted. And I am bending these bolts as I do this, so they're kind of sacrificial. I'm only going to ever use these bolts one time. And just in case, I'm not going to torque down super crazy on these. I'm just going to get them tight. That's it. That's about all I want. That is solid and it's got just a hair. Let me show you. This is super awesome. I'm so stoked. It's got just a hair of clearance. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at that. It's not going to vibrate. It's not going to get there but it looks like it's one piece. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it's such random luck. But look at that. So that's going to be how it sits. So the license plate's going to point up a little bit. Actually, facing the Jeep, it's going to be a little bit more like that. So the license plate's going to point up a little bit. The bolts, I don't love that the bolts are sticking down, but they're going to be below your eyesight, so it'll be mostly like that. And then it'll have my license plate right there. Super cool. Super stoked. All right, let's move on.